you probably have all the questions about opening a boutique, starting an online boutique. Hey, I'm here to help you. Today, I'm going to be answering some of your frequently asked questions about starting a boutique. These are the ones I hear basically every day. So stay tuned. If we haven't met yet, hi, I'm Emily Benson. I am a business consultant for boutique owners. And hopefully you're stumbling upon this because you really want to start a boutique or you've been thinking about it for a long time, or maybe you're just really about to start up and you've been following me for a while. If that's you, comment below. Let me know where you're at in the stage of starting your boutique. And if you want more free tips and resources and like all my expert knowledge, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you get all the updates uh, as I come out with them. Okay, so the biggest question everyone asks me is how much money, how much inventory do I need to get started? Well, I have a video about that. I'm going to post it somewhere up here. And I think you can start with as little as $75. Now, that's for inventory specifically. It's going to cost you some money, obviously, to have a point of sale system, meaning you need somewhere to sell it and accept credit cards. We have to know that like, we live in the day of PayPal and Sezzle and Afterpay and all these things. You need a payment term terminal uh, or a POS system, no matter what that choice is. And we can talk a little bit about that. I think maybe I'll do another video on it. If you have a way for people to pay you, then you can sell things. Now, spending $75 on inventory, you may need to spend somewhere between $30 and $70 on getting a website set up. But with a free trial from Shopify, you can use two weeks of that for free to get yourself set up and start selling immediately. That doesn't answer the question of what you should be buying. Now, if you're going to start a boutique, uh, whether it's home decor, gifts, children's, women's, men's, you've got to think about what are the things that people buy most often? What are the categories that they're buying the biggest percentage of? Okay, that's the best way you can explain it. So let's say you're going to open a home decor boutique. Well, the first thing I would do is I would look for other home decor stores or departments or other brands that I really love. Maybe they're from an HGTV show or maybe it's a, a local home store that you know about or a gift store, walk in there, go to their website, see what they carry, see what their top categories are, see what's on their front homepage. All of these things are going to be some of their best sellers. They're going to be the categories that they sell the most of. So that's a really good first clue on where you should start to plan your own assortment. Now, when I talk about planning your own assortment, that's where we take these departments and we start to break them down. So let's move on to say like, I have a men's boutique or I'm going to start a men's clothing store. Now, depending on the man, the person that you are catering to, so that ideal target customer, you can plan outfits. Where are they going? What are they doing? Why are they shopping with you? What are they buying from you? What do they need to get dressed? That's what you want to provide for them. So let's say you were going to do a men's store in a warm location where people love to party. Okay great spot. Now, that might be shorts. That might be tank tops. Maybe there's flip-flops in there. Maybe there's hats, visors, sunglasses. You don't want to get too wide, but you do want to be able to provide something for each part of their body. Now, people always say like, oh, I should have something for everyone. No, you should have lots of things for one person or maybe two people that are kind of similar. That's the way to go. The more hyper-specific you can be and the less general store you present yourself as, the better off you are. People will find you quicker. Your ideal customer will say, oh my gosh, you have exactly what I need. I am immediately going to purchase that thing from you. And there you go. You're starting to make sales. So thinking about what that person needs in a party location. Uh, maybe they need some matching sets. Maybe they need a giant hoodie for when it gets cold at night with the logo of where you're located, right? All of these things add up to become an assortment. You can't just sell graphic tees. I'm sorry. You can't just sell Stanley Cup dupes. I'm sorry. You can't just sell a bunch of junk and think you're going to make money. It doesn't work like that anymore. And if you think that, then you're on the wrong channel. I'm not the person for you. How much inventory? What do you really need? Well, 
you need basically the smallest amount you can possibly start with, which is like maybe five things, maybe three things. Maybe you have seven amazing, all different pieces in different departments, but everything put together looks so good. So again, you have something for every part of that person's body. Now, you don't have to get that deep. You could say, I'm going to open a women's boutique and I'm just going to sell dresses. There are plenty of brands that have done that in the past couple of years. Now they not only sell dresses, they sell tops, they sell kids, they sell all those things. But you've got to start somewhere. And the more focused you can be, and I hope that's what I'm getting across to you now, but the more focused you can be, the more successful you're going to be. The least you start with will allow you to have free cash in case you don't sell that stuff. So you can buy into other things to test, or you have one style that hits and you can reorder something similar or the same thing. Having cash on hand is your greatest superpower when you're starting any business, but especially an inventory-based business like a boutique. All right, so like, how do you know exactly what to buy though when you have so many choices? Buy what you like. Buy what you are freaking out, you think is so cute that you would wear, that you would dress your kid in, that you would give to your pet to play with. Like whatever you're selling, if you love it, the energy is going to be behind it for you to sell it. There's a lot of people just selling random stuff. Again, I can talk about that all day. Don't be that kind of person. Sell something specific, sell what you absolutely love, and don't turn back. Now, if you need more help with inventory, where to buy it, you know, what my favorite vendors are, I have a free inventory guide. We're going to put the link, click the link and go get it. It's free. It's tons of value. I give you a ton uh, of information. And if you need more, you can always grab my book. Now, let's talk about two more things. Free shipping. Should I offer free shipping, Emily? I have an online store. Should I offer free shipping? Maybe. Like, do you want to? Are you going to bake it into your retail prices? How are you going to pay for it? Because it's not free for you. It's free for them. As long as you're figuring out how you can work it into your costs, I think free shipping is a great way to go. That said, you don't have to. If you have great items that you love, that you're so excited about, that you know will sell no matter what, people will pay for shipping. They really will if you have great items. So it can go either way. I've seen it work either way for lots of different people. So you have to do what you get excited about and what you feel good about in terms of paying for. Okay, once you get all this inventory, in. It's time to sell it. Uh, Before you even need to ship it, you're going to have to take pictures. Don't use stock photos. People always ask me, can I use stock photos, Emily? Yes. The answer is yes, you can. Do I suggest it? No, don't do it. We all have these little things, right? These are great cameras. See that? That's a great camera. I'm not filming on it now, but I generally do often. And the cameras on our phones are so good now. If I had the same phone 10 years ago when I had my store, I would be shooting things all day. I would go on my porch. I'd go in my backyard. The deal is, is that we have these beautiful cameras in our pockets. If you can get a good background and good lighting, then you should be taking your own pictures. Now, it could take a tripod. It could take a friend. It could take a spouse. It could take a child. But please, model your own stuff. Be it in your clothing. Be it in your outfits. If you can't do that, at least do a flat lay or put it on a mannequin. But have the photos be yours. Why? Well, two reasons. And everyone likes to fight me on this because they say, well, Emily, I use a drop shipper and they give me beautiful photos. Yes, the drop shippers do give you beautiful photos. Even vendors will give you beautiful photos too. Here's the thing. The more people that use those stock photos on the internet, the less you're going to get found because people will do image searches and they'll find other websites. Like you don't want your photo to be showing up on multiple other websites so that people don't think it's your website. Like this is a weird thing that's happened now that there's more online boutiques is that If you look up one stock photo, you might find it on six websites on Google Image Search. That's a problem. Like, that is not helping you. So always take your own pictures because that can happen. And here's the other thing that happens. Because anyone can have a boutique, anyone can have a website now, there are a lot of, like, fake websites or a lot of international websites that aren't real that are just trying to steal people's money. And you don't want to get lumped with those people. You want to have a real active website with a real live human behind it. That is the way to be successful. That is the way to stand out. And stock photos don't get you there. So 
gather yourself together, get over any body image stuff you have, use a little filter on your face, like not a huge one, but you're like allowed to use a little filter. You're allowed to like do what you need to, to feel good. But remember the more you show up as you, the more you are honest with your people, the more attached they're going to be to you and the more they're going to shop with you. So getting over like whoever in your family is going to say negative stuff about you or whoever in your friend group is not going to support you with your new business, like whatever, get rid of them. Like that is not your problem. You are going to show up for your business because you're excited about it and you're going to take pictures and you're going to film video because you love what you bought and you're excited about this new business that you have. You have to start here because here's the deal. As you grow, you're going to want to do that anyway. You're going to make connections with your customers. That That is the best way to establish yourself as a brand, put yourself in the game so that people know that you are a boutique business and show up for yourself if you're going to have a boutique business. I want to urge you to take your own pictures because it's the easiest way to show up for yourself. If you're going to sit back and post things and try to hide behind a screen and pretend this boutique isn't yours, guess what? you're going to be out of business fast. But if you put yourself on screen, if you try those things on, if you show up on video, you're going to grow so much faster than the person who's just sitting behind their screen. So show up. Don't take yourself too seriously. Put yourself in those pictures. Put yourself on video like I do all the time, and it's probably blurry and going crazy, but whatever. I'm here. I'm a real person. You're a real person too. So let's show up for each other. That's the beauty of having a small boutique business. That's the beauty of having a small brand, you can be that for someone else. So show up for your people. Hopefully this answered some of your frequently asked questions. If you have more questions, I'd love to make this a series. So drop comments below, drop questions below, and I'll keep making more videos about starting your boutique frequently asked questions. All right, guys, see you on the next one.